Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, just starting things up here. Let's get rid of all that in the background because I don't need that. Bye bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we need to talk. Y'all don't mind, do y'all? Ladies and gentlemen, as a matter of fact, we're going to turn off the music at this point. We'll probably bring it back later, maybe, maybe not. But we need to talk. I have 30 minutes before I have to start my meeting. This should not take 30 minutes, but because I am getting ready to demonstrate what I'm talking about, it might take 30 minutes. And if it does, the fact that this is the ultimate remedy for saving your home, saving your student loan, saving your business loan, and saving your car loan from foreclosure under any circumstances. We need to understand something. I'm going to explain this again. I did it in an earlier video. I had a $31,000 OID check. I can prove that not only did I have the right, but I can prove that the percentages were accurate. Ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand, when you become the holder in due course, because somebody sells something to you, like a note, you become the holder in due course. The OID is the interest between the sale of the original, the actual face value of the original note, and the purchase price that you purchased it for. That's the OID. And that's how you calculate the interest. I give you that. Go do your research and tell me I'm wrong. Doesn't matter if you purchased a used anything. All mortgage notes that are sold on a second sec, sec, secondary market are used notes. You are the original issuer and or holder in due course. You are the owner. When you purchase an automobile or a home, the note comes with it. Y'all know that. So you become the holder of the note. You are the owner, not the DMV. Don't let them clown you. That's why we're teaching people how to bond their title to their vehicle. Now, we got, got much more to talk about. We're not going to go into detail about that stuff right now because this is much more important. I went to the bank to deposit the check. The check cleared almost instantaneously. There was a short hold, and then they lifted the hold. I didn't know. I just went and did the online banking because I was going to connect the accounts. And next thing I know, it says funds available. Really? Okay. So I said to myself, and I told a couple people, I'm going down to the bank tomorrow, and I'm going to get a cashier's check, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of some business. I go down to the bank. It's in a so-called affluent area, and the individual gives me that I'm going to help you, but I don't want to help you. Look, as a matter of fact, I don't even want you in our store. You're not the type of clientele we want here. That's the look he gives me. I ignore it, and I tell him what I'm there for, and I, y'all know me. I give him that altitude that I hold on to. You know, the altitude that I keep, that I don't let go nowhere. Whew. Let me tell you something. That mother, <clears throat> excuse me, person decided that he was going to <sighs> treat me as if I was a punk. I'm from the old school. When people say punk, I understand exactly what they mean. And that's how he was treating me. I was not happy with his stupidity, but I tolerated it. Ladies and gentlemen, that person, literally, I, I got to say it because it's the truth, took his time, tried to come up with every excuse for delaying things. And then after he delayed things for 15 minutes, I said, what is the problem? 
the fun, are the funds available or not? Yo, the funds, it says the funds are available, then what is the problem? Why is it taking so long for a simple cashier's check? Sir, I, I'm going as fast. No, you are not going as fast as you can. Don't sit up here and lie to me. And then he says, well, sir, I'm processing it now. Then he told me he had to get paper and all that other stuff. I said, that is not my problem. The fact is, you're moving slow on purpose. I found out later why. Because he was trying to get them to put a hold on my account. For no reason whatsoever. No reason whatsoever. So, when I left there, I was very upset. Wasn't happy at all. Wasn't even near, nowhere near happy. So I... Uh, Went to the branch where I set up the account. I told them. They told me. They apologized profusely for what this person had done. I told them, don't worry about it. Literally, that was my response. Do not worry about it. Because I'm going to take care of him, is what I was thinking. It's, it's time for me to introduce myself to him. So I called and filed a complaint. I called customer service several times. And they all confirmed that the funds show that they're available. Even to this day, the funds show that they're available. But he had them put a hold on the account. Ladies and gentlemen, there was no reason for putting a hold on the account. So I went to the God that I serve. The God that I serve, his name is Jehovah. I don't care what you think about Jehovah, what you say about Jehovah, because your thoughts, your beliefs, I could care less. Jehovah is the God I serve. And so I went to him and I asked him for his help. And I call it an understanding. And the understanding simply was this arbitration. Now, most people would think, oh, you're going to do a contract, you're going to put an arbitration clause, send it to them and default them and blah, blah, blah. No. And he knows me. He knows that I wouldn't have been thinking along that line. That's elementary style thinking. I don't do elementary. The first thing that came to my mind is that the bank has an arbitration clause in their contracts. I said, but huh, it's going to be the online banking. That's where the contract is going to be. I said, that's where I'm going to find it is online. And sure enough, I found their online contract and it talked about arbitration. Good. And it says that any dispute must be done through arbitration because the individual was threatening to call the police. And I didn't feel like having nobody show up at my door because they would get my attitude. And I just don't feel like having to deal with that stupidity and trying to tell them, y'all need to get off my property. So I went to my God again. And I expressed this to him. And I left it in his hands. Well, after going over the arbitration clause, it said that all disputes must be handled exclusively through arbitration, especially deposits. Well, this was a deposit. Then I also read availability of deposits. Then it says government checks and Federal Reserve checks are to be made available immediately. I'm going to show you guys something so that you can see this. I'll put this link underneath for you guys. This is the Federal Registry. Endorsement and payment of checks drawn on the United States Treasury. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys wanted to know how to write checks to the Federal Reserve in your capacity as a bank? Well, here's your start. Okay, I will get this to you. Okay, this is their Federal Registry. These are the regulations. This is kind of thick, okay? So what I'm going to do... I'm going to tell you how you do it. You see this right here? See, that has a printer, but I don't want that printer. I'm going to hit print right here. Now, this is going to have my printer here, the Hewlett Packard, but we're not going to Hewlett Packard this one. We're going to PDF of this one. And so I'm going to do this right here. Wake up. Stop listening. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I don't even have to touch that. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to have to pause, y'all, because I want to show y'all something. I got to pause. Nope, I can show it to you right here. Whew. Now, this is the arbitration agreement with U.S. Bank. Hold on. We're going to do Control F, and I want to do arbitration. Wake up. Wake up. Arbitration. Stop listening. Stop listening. Okay, 
I know it's on page 17, so we're going one, two, three, and 17. See? 17. All right. Well, it says 18, but it's actually 17. Okay. See that? That's 16. This is 17. All right. Pay attention. Resolution of disputes by arbitration. This is, gives it exclusivity with the American Arbitration Association. Okay? Please read this portion carefully. Under this provision, you waive your right to try any covered claim in court before a judge or a jury or to bring or participate in any class or other representative action. Waived it, they said. Really? That's why I put void on everything. That's why it's part of my address, because I don't waive anything. I never will waive a right in order to exercise a right. I have a right to access the bank under the Federal Reserve Act. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this says that only under arbitrators review. This is the availability of funds. You guys need to pay attention to this. You're going to look for the very same thing with your bank. Now, some of the banks, like Celine, you have to call them and have them send you a copy because they don't have their arbitration clause online. They do that on purpose because you guys are not supposed to know about arbitration. As I told some people earlier this morning, I called Celine Financial. And when I called Celine Financial, and I told the representative, and I was kind, I don't have an account with you. However, I am attempting to locate your arbitration clause and your, pay attention, deposit agreement. Where can I find? Click. And she hung up on me. Literally, just that quick. So I called back, spoke with another young lady, and she's the one who told me that that has to be requested. And I told her, thank you. I would have the individual who I represent. I will have him contact them and ask for that information. Ladies and gentlemen, the availability of funds. Funds availability means your ability to withdraw your funds from your account, whether those withdrawals are in cash, check, automatic payment, or any other method we offer as access to your account. If the deposit funds are not available, then you won't be able to do it. Then it says, please remember that even after an item has cleared, we have made funds available to you and you have withdrawn the funds, you are still responsible for the item you deposited that are returned to us as unpaid. I understand that. I don't have a problem with that. Determining availability. The day the funds become available is determined by counting business days from the day of the deposit. Every day is a business day except Saturday, Sunday, and holidays. If you make a deposit in person in a branch, then... On the day that we are open, we will consider that day to be the day of your deposit for purposes of calculating when your funds will be available. However, if you make your deposit on the day we're not open, then it says if the deposit is made after 8 p.m., blah, blah, blah. But let's get to the point. Immediate availability, all accounts. The following types of deposits will usually be available for withdrawal immediately. Then it tells you those deposits. Ah, but that's, oh, look at here. Longer delays may apply, but it says government checks, cashier's checks, and other types of special checks. If you make a deposit of one of the following items in person to one of our employees, our policy is to make the funds of those deposits available no later than the first business day after the deposit. No limit. <sighs> now, hold on. Now, there are some limits. Pay attention. They say right here, large deposits. If you deposit checks totaling more than 5,000, blah, 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 in the aggregate on any one day, then the first $5,525 of your total deposit will be available the first business day after the day of your deposit. The excess amount will be available the fifth business day after the day of your deposit. Ladies and gentlemen, not with government checks. And that's what they talk about here. Safeguard exceptions, and so forth. Oh, look at this. It's a business account. It's a business account. It's a business account. Let's find out. Our general availability policy for these accounts is to make the funds available to you the first business day after the day of your deposit. We generally make some portion of the day's deposit available for withdrawal immediately. 
see the previous section for the types and the amounts of the deposits that are available immediately. I knew it. This is a business account. Okay? On purpose, it's a business account. Oh, special rules for new accounts, retail business. See, normally, if you are a new customer, the following special rules will apply during the first 30 business days when you open the account. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Those rules do apply. The only problem is that was a government check. That was not a traveler's check. That was not a somebody else check. Federal, state, and local government checks will be available the first business day after the day of the deposit, certain conditions. For example, if the check must be payable to you, have excess amount will be available the fifth business day. No 30-day waiting. None. But because it was a government check, the Treasury has regulations saying that the funds are to be made available immediately. Ain't that something? Now, in my account, it says available. You guys are going to do the same thing. Now, yours is not whether the funds are available or not. Let's talk now. Each one of you has a loan with the federal government. So we're going to come here and we're going to type in F-E-D-E-R-A-L, Federal Reserve. I want Section 16, Paragraph 4. Federal Reserve notes. Yeah, we can do this one. Ladies and gentlemen, paragraph four says, when you give the bank your promissory note along with the application, what is the application that they're talking about? Real quick, just because some of you guys are have not been here the whole time. So we're going to do FED, Federal Reserve Operating Circular number 10. We're going to... I think I need to do this one. Yeah, we're going to do this one because I need the, it's the 53-page document PDF that you need. This, this may be it, but I don't think this is it. So we'll check. So this may be it. If it says 53, if it says 33, that's not the right one. It's the same one. It just doesn't have the correct forms. So we need 53 pages. Ah. <sighs> It gave me the wrong one, and I already have the document. So let's click on this. Nope, that's not it either. Give me one second. Sorry, I had to sneeze. That's why I said give me a second. Uh, hold on one second. Let me get back to the operating circular number 10. Federal Reserve operating circular number 10. This one says revised. Then this is it right here. Hold on. I don't want that. Okay, I, I want the actual operating circular, but this ain't it. Operating circulars off-site. Let's, it's supposed to be official site. Operating circular 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Operating circular number 10, lending PDF. Let's see. Still 33, so that's still not it. So give me a second. I've already posted it. It's on our what you call it, but let's see. If this is it. No, we don't want the off-site. Completing requirements. Okay. You know what? I will give you guys this. I'll give you guys this link for this, too. Because I'm a little surprised at this. We're going to duplicate this. I will put these links underneath because this tells you guys how to complete your... Many people were asking me, how do they complete the operating circular? I clicked on the wrong button. Ah, sorry. Got the right one open, but I clicked on the wrong button. Uh, okay. So I'm not going to find the operating... I need the complete operating circular. So let me try one more again. I'm going to pause, y'all. Like I said... Okay, I was able to find it. See, 53. That's the one you're looking for. And when you get the 53, you're going to go to page 31. So, 3, 31. 31. I want you all to pay attention to this paragraph right here because this is the important thing. This is the thing that will change the entire mortgage game. 
I'll be doing videos on this nonstop. To the Federal Reserve Bank, this is the document, this is part of the documents you sign at closing that the banks have you signed. You may not notice this particular document because they don't have to use this exact form. What they have to do is create what's known as an authorization list. You sign, your name is already typed on the document at closing. Below are the names, titles, and signatures of individuals authorized you to pledge collateral, the promissory note, to, do you see that forward slash? What's, what's the forward slash to and or request to borrow money from the Federal Reserve Banks on behalf of the borrower identified above? So they are borrowing money on your behalf. The bank is borrowing money on your behalf. Pay attention. You've given them permission. You're going to have to go back and reread this operating circular to understand it. But the bank is borrowing money from the Federal Reserve on your behalf. Why? Because this operates as the application packet or package for U.S. borrowers. And you are requesting, as a U.S. borrower, the capacity, any Federal Reserve Bank, to request to borrow funds from the local Federal Reserve Bank. And these are the documents that you are supposed to give them. Now, it says if you have a problem, you can consult the local Federal Reserve Bank for any special instructions. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we have discussed, they are supposed to be depositing funds into your account. Why? Because the bank is requesting to borrow money from the Federal Reserve Banks on your behalf. Okay. Whew, glad we got that out of the way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, since the bank is requesting to borrow money on, on your behalf, let me make sure we understand something here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's called a deposit. And if the Federal Reserve is depositing money into your account, hold on, let's make sure that they are depositing funds into your account. We have to make sure. I don't want this one. I apologize. I closed the one and I need to open it back up. I closed the Federal Reserve Section 16. One second, FED. Federal Reserve Section 16, I want this one, paragraph number four. And we're going to scroll down to number four. The Federal Reserve Board of Governors of so the Federal Reserve System shall have the right, now they have the right to do this, acting through the local Federal Reserve agent to grant and hold or in part or to reject entirely your application because you are any Federal Reserve Bank. This is the capacity you're applying for. That's what the application is. That's the capacity. A, any Federal Reserve Bank. That means any bank. So you're operating as a bank. Shh, don't tell nobody. For the Federal Reserve notes. But to the extent that such an application may be granted by the Federal Reserve Board of Governors or the Federal Reserve System, shall, must, have no other choice, obligated through its local Federal Reserve agents, supply Federal Reserve notes to the banks, that's you, any Federal Reserve Bank, so applying. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't care what it says afterwards. We only care about the fact is that they were supposed to give them Federal Reserve notes. Now, if they give them Federal Reserve notes, what did that constitute? That constitutes a deposit, people. That's a deposit. Well, let's make sure what a deposit is, because I know some of y'all confused. I know some of y'all are having a hard time trying to put these pieces together. So give me a second while I go talk to Bart. There's going to be quite... Uh, a number of links underneath, so you guys are going to have to go into the description and see the links. Wake up. What is the legal definition for deposit? Financial. Question mark. Question mark. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last one because I got to go. Uh, sorry that explaining to you guys what I went through, but I needed you guys to understand how potent this is. With this information, nobody will ever be foreclosed on ever again. No need to file bankruptcy. The moment you go into court, we'll be doing other videos following this up. But the moment you go into court, say, wait, hold on, excuse me. But there's a problem. The Federal Reserve Act says that you guys don't have any jurisdiction. They'll look at you like you're strange and crazy. Well, according to Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, paragraph number four, 
they receive Federal Reserve notes on my behalf. That constitutes a deposit. And I have a, a contract with them. And that contract explicitly says regarding deposits that arbitration is the sole means for resolving disputes. Well, apparently this is a dispute because somebody has filed this controversy before this court. And the court only has jurisdiction if there's a controversy. Well, the court has no jurisdiction over this matter because the controversy is to be handled through arbitration. So I demand my right to arbitration. Just as simple. You ain't got to prove nothing. In the legal and financial context, a deposit is a sum of money paid to another person or entity with the understanding that it will be repaid at a later date. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a deposit. Oh, God. Sorry, I got to get him to do it again because I, I said deposit. Types of deposit. Yeah, see, he gave me a general answer because he's listening to the conversation. He's listening to the conversations I'm talking. And so he's trying to figure out where I'm going, and he ain't figuring it out. <sighs> Depending on the jurisdiction, however, a generally a deposit is a sum of money that is transferred from one party to another with the understanding that it will be repaid with or without interest or with a premium, either on demand or at the time or, or at a time or circumstances agreed upon by the parties. Deposits are typically made into bank accounts, but they can also be made into other types of accounts, such as a brokerage account or an escrow account. Characteristics of a deposit, and they list the characteristics of a deposit. So, ladies and gentlemen, when the Federal Reserve gives Federal Reserve notes to the bank on your behalf, on your behalf, it says you're required to pay that back. Well, you did. You gave the promissory note, which is, hold on, so that you guys will see it, because don't say that he didn't tell y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to understand what's going on, what's being deposited, because many of you guys are not going to understand. Any Federal Reserve Bank, that means any bank, may make an application, that means you in the capacity of a bank, may make an application to the local Federal Reserve agent, the lender, for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes, I want a loan here and before provided for as it may require it. Such application shall be accompanied with a tender. What type of tender? Tender offer. Well, tender to the Federal Reserve agent of collateral in the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve note that's applied for and issued pursuant to the application. The collateral, the tender of collateral, that collateral security thus offered shall be promissory notes drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, as acquired under these sections. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a tender offer. So watch this. Wake up. Uh-oh, sorry. What is a tender offer? Question mark. Open quote. Open quote. Close quote. Stop listening. In corporate finance, a tender offer is a public offer to buy a specific number of shares, company stocks, and blah, blah, blah. A tender of offer or tender offer regulated by the Securities and Exchange Committee. Type of tender offers, benefit of tender offers, and I just need the one that says payment. Wake up. I thought a tender offer was payment. Question mark. Please explain. Question mark. Stop listening. Yes. A tender offer can be considered as a form of payment in the context of corporate finance. It represents an offer from an acquiring entity to purchase shares of the target company stock. And we're not talking about stocks. We're talking about tendering payment in the form of a promissory note. Payment upon tendering, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead. I'm giving you the keywords that you need to look up. Go ahead and do your research. But again, I'll be doing follow-up videos to prove that none of you should be losing your home. Now, we've been working with our clients to shore up the fact that we provided all of the proper notices so that they don't have anything to say. And by going in and saying, no, we have an arbitration agreement, they received a deposit from the Federal Reserve that covered this note, and they are claiming that I still owe them what they've already received from the Federal Reserve. So, no, 
arbitration must be determined first because they have just brought about a controversy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the 30 minutes I said I had. Got to go. We'll get back with you shortly. Goodbye.